Hey everyone, it's Heather with Tropic Exotica, and today I wanted to talk about being an empath. But before I get started, I wanted to share a couple things that I've experienced recently. So, one of the reasons why I started this channel was because I wanted to share um, different experiences I've had so that they could help other people. And I also just want to kind of share in real time things that I'm experiencing on the spiritual awakening path and to kind of let you know that, you know, we're all on this journey together, we're all experiencing different things, and a lot of times I experience stuff that I don't know the meaning. And so, by all means, if you um, have been experiencing the same thing or can explain to me what's happening, I'd really appreciate it. So, um, one of the things that I experienced recently is um, I was listening to a DNA activation light transmission, light language transmission from Judy Satori. Um, and if you haven't heard about Judy Satori, I invite you to go check her out. Um, her last name is spelled S-A-R-T-O-R-I. And she has a lot of helpful information on her website. And right now she is offering a free six week um, activation and um, kind of coaching along the spiritual journey and it's all free and, and they're doing them live but if you can't make the live then you can just go check out the recording so you just need to go on her website sign up your email and then you will get notified um, for the courses that are happening so a couple weeks ago I was listening to one of the courses and I just decided to um, take my plasma sentient transient quartz and put it in my left palm. So um, when you receive light language, she invites you to open up your hands. And so I was sitting there with the crystal in my hand and honestly, I don't know why I just thought, hey, I should put a crystal in my hand. Um, and I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, but I just felt guided to do that. So I just followed my intuition. Um, and so afterwards, um, as I was going to sleep, I experienced what I believe is called a cryo, where if you've had your kundalini activated, um, your body can do these weird things where it will jerk uncontrollably. And you know, for me, the experience has been like somebody poking me with a cattle prod. It's that kind of just like out of control, like you literally have no control of your body. So as I was going to sleep that night, I experienced that, and I've only experienced that a couple times before. Um, and then also I heard this super loud noise like, um, it wasn't like a gunshot, but it was that kind of shocking, startling. I would say it reminded me more of like a bow and arrow being shot. And so I have no idea what that meant. I don't know if, you know, somehow receiving that um, light language transmission um, and putting the quartz crystal in my hand amplified it somehow and it, you know, affected my body. Um, and then later that night, um, I had a couple experiences where I started to have this vision and it's one of those things where, you know, when you start having visions, um, you know, it, it's hard to kind of capture them. But all I remember is it was kind of like a two-dimensional rectangular drawing and there were some symbols in it that were really small and then those, that image was changing to another image. So anyway, I don't really know what that was, but it was definitely, I feel, connected to that light language transmission. And then the most weird experience I had was, um, I remember, you know, if you meditate, you kind of have this experience where it's just like this black void and you're just in that space. Um, I was in that black void space and it, it reminded me of when a robot is turned on and you see these lights flickering um, and, and normally in robots or whatever they're bright but these were kind of dim and then there was movement within that that was that had patterns to it and so the light and then there was some movement and then I just remember this feeling like something's about to happen like you know I could just feel this energy building up like you know, either my pineal gland's going to burst open or my crown chakra is going to burst open or something. But I remember just this excitement. Anyway, it was such a weird, different experience that I don't know a lot of times 
when I experience stuff like that what the meaning is um, but I just thought I would share just to let you know that you know I'm experiencing stuff right now that I don't have the answer to and you know I'm just kind of trying to figure it out as I go along too um, but if you happen to have any information about those things uh, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section for this video anyway all right so I just wanted to share those stories um, and also I want to thank uh, my new subscribers and I appreciate everybody who likes my videos and who shares them I really appreciate your support that really means a lot to me okay so let's get into being an empath so this is one of those topics where there's so much to say that I'm probably gonna break this up into a few videos because um, for me I think that learning and understanding about being an empath has probably been the most helpful thing that I've learned along my spiritual journey so far because it has helped explain so much and it has you know since I've learned that I've I've had such a better quality of life because I have a better understanding of what's happening and you know during the spiritual awakening process what you're going to understand is it's really all about you know becoming more aware of yourself and so um, understanding that you're an empath and you're sensitive to energy is really a huge deal so um, when it comes to being an empath um, it's considered to be a gift so a lot of people though would tell you it feels like a curse because <laughs> being sensitive to energy can be very challenging um, another name that you might hear it called is clairsentience. And so one of the biggest, I think, impacts to me being an empath has been suffering from fatigue. Um, and I think, you know, throughout my life I've always struggled with energy and, you know, it wasn't until I kind of went along the spiritual journey and path and I became aware of the concept of being an empath and started to understand what that actually means um, did I really you know start to have a better understanding of this this fatigue um, and you know I remember going to doctors specifically and saying I'm tired I'm tired of being tired and I want you to run every test there is and try to find out what the heck is wrong with me because I'm tired of being you know exhausted all the time and you know every time they would run these tests and they'd be like no you know everything's fine you're just stressed out so I'm sure a lot of people have experienced that same um, same example there so before we get into um, being an empath and specifically fatigue related to being an empath I just want to talk about the general understanding of fatigue so when it comes to fatigue, fatigue can be, you know, from a variety of factors. I mean, you could have an illness. Um, it could be from diet. It could be from stress. It could be from lifestyle. Or it could be from you being an empath and being sensitive to energy. So um, during my path, I started to look at, you know, okay, when I am tired, let me look at um, to try to figure out what that is. And so when it comes to diet, one of the things that I've started becoming aware of is, you know, how do I feel after I eat something? And I remember when quinoa became really popular, you know, I remember jumping on the bandwagon too. And, um, and I remember eating it a couple times and immediately afterwards, um, I had a really bad headache. I was so tired. I had to go take a nap. And, you know, once you start connecting the dots, that's like, hey, you know, every time I eat this, then I don't feel well. Um, and so I realized that I wasn't uh, rinsing the quinoa off enough. And if you don't do that, then you can have adverse effects. Another thing is um, eating certain types of wheat bread. I have realized that I can literally just go into brain fog and just be totally exhausted and can't keep my eyes open. So I've become more aware of how sensitive I am to wheat. Um, I had an experience recently where, um, and it's the gluten in wheat uh, most likely. So I had an experience not too long ago where I was trying to have, uh, you know, this plant-based sausage and 
Um, after I ate it, I realized the main ingredient was gluten, and I had such an adverse effect from that that, you know, I realized, okay, that this is one of those that I need to, you know, realize that this is not for me. This is making me sick, and, you know, fatigue is not how I want to go through my life. And of course, I think most of us are already aware that, you know, once we eat a heavy meal that we become tired. So, you know, it's really just about being conscientious and, and looking at, you know, what am I experiencing and then trying to, you know, look around you and try to understand what those causes could be. So, you know, when it comes to fatigue, I always look at, okay, you know, what's going on in my life? Do I have any stressful factors? Do I... You know, am I taking care of myself? Am I eating right? Um, you know, I just kind of go through this list. And, and so that's where I, you know, try to understand, it, you know, how to feel better. Because at the end of the day, we want to feel vibrant. We want to feel healthy. We want to feel energetic. And so we have to start being more aware of our experience and then, you know, looking outside and understanding, you know, what are these things that are impacting me so that I can feel better. So when it comes to energy and being sensitive to energy, I kind of wanted to just talk through a little bit of what I've experienced and kind of how I've started to navigate, um, you know, being sensitive to energy. So I would say that I kind of bucket um, being sensitive to energy into kind of two main categories like people and then also um, external influences. So when it comes to people, I would first talk about, you know, experiences that you have one-on-one -on -one with people. So these can be, you know, obviously your partner, your friends, your family, um, co-workers, it can even be strangers. Um, and so when you become more consciously aware, you'll understand, okay, when I come away from interacting with this person, have I felt, you know, energetically, you know, uplifted or am I, do I come away from this interaction being drained? And so I think that, you know, sometimes we don't really even be are aware of how much we are um, expending our energy around people that we might not even realize that somebody around us that's close to us could be draining our energy. Um, and I have a distinct memory one time of meeting somebody at a retreat in Sedona and I just remember becoming aware like, wow, I don't have to try to lift you up. Like, you already have enough energy. And so it's like you might not even be consciously aware that you're always kind of trying to uplift people because a lot of times, you know, empaths are very sensitive or caring people. Um, and so, you know, once you kind of start you know, becoming more of an observer in your interactions, I think that's when you're really going to understand, like, hey, you know, am I coming away energized or am I coming away drained? And so, you know, like I said, I started becoming an observer. And so, you know, as empaths, we have a tendency to be naturally, you know, good listeners. And what I've found is that energy suckers kind of just hone in on us. It's like, hey, there's somebody that's going to, you know, listen to me. And so what ends up happening a lot of times is people will just blather and blather and blather on. And, um, you know, because you're nice and polite, you're just going to sit there most of the time and just kind of listen and listen. Um, but the issue is, is that because, you know, we are nice and we are caring, um, we are actually listening to them. And so when you actively listen, that takes a lot of energy. And so you're going to realize that, you know, you come away from these conversations being drained. So, you know, one of the things that I've realized is, you know, well, first of all, most people, like 75% of the population, I believe, are extroverts. So extroverts like to talk. Introverts, most of us empaths are introverts. And, you know, so we're, we're okay just kind of sitting back and listening. Um, but when it comes to understanding dynamics between people, you know, you have to understand that we have needs too. And, you know, we, that takes a lot out of us and we're going to have to go retreat, you know, for a long time after somebody's just, you know, drained all of our energy. And so, you know, what I've kind of felt like is a lot of times, you know, when people talk, they don't really... 
they're not really concerned about what you have to say you know they just want somebody to talk so sometimes it's like you know what well you might as well talk to a wall because you're not engaging with me you're not asking for my feedback or questions um, and, it, and then if they do a lot of times you'll see that all of a sudden they get on their phone or um, they interrupt you you know or you can tell that they're not listening so once you kind of start realizing that hey wait a minute you know my time and my energy are precious too um, and so then it's like, okay, you know what, no more of this. I'm going to start establishing boundaries. And, you know, once you start realizing that, you know, people are just going to take your energy away if you allow them to, that's when you want to step back and say, you know, is this what I want in my life? You know, and so that's something that you really want to be conscientious about is the dynamic of energy exchange between people. So, at the end of the day, it's about honoring yourself to understand and know that your time and your energy are precious. And you don't want to have that wasted on somebody who doesn't care. And that's my perspective. And it took me a while to get there, but I'm like, no, you know what, it's my time. I want to interact with people who lift me up. I want to interact with people who listen to me. Um, and so that's something that I've really been focusing on and um, being more assertive about that. So the next type of interaction with people that is important to impasse are being in crowds. So crowds are really the impasse worst nightmare and especially at Christmas time when you have so many people out and about running around that's like an impasse worst nightmare and there's a lot of memes out there about Christmas time because you know that that will just send us into a spin because it's just too much um, and so basically what it comes down to is when there's a lot of people there's a lot of energy and if you're sensitive to energy then that's going to just overload your system um, and so one of the things that I've experienced where you know a lot of times you don't have a choice you have to get out in the crowds um, and one of those are airports so those I really have to psych myself up I'm not gonna lie um, and so one of the things that I've done is I will go and try to find a restaurant with a booth and stay in there if I'm gonna have to wait a while um, another thing that you want to think about is you know um, I just end up shopping at odd hours you know I do a lot of online shopping but if I have to go out you know I'll go grocery shopping at 6 in the morning so I don't have to be with a bunch of people um, but you know there are times when you have to put yourself in these situations and you know until you've really learned and understood the different things that you have to do in order to survive those circumstances um, I mean it wasn't too long ago before you know I realized wait a minute this is really gonna drain me and I didn't kind of properly prepare myself for but I remember volunteering at a food bank event and I was literally in bed the entire next day. I mean, it just totally wiped me out. So another type of interactions that impasse will have is um, we can actually experience energy from unknown sources or long distance. And so this one is really interesting and I'm going to save the details um, for this for a different, another video. Um, but the main thing that I want to talk about is that as you become more self-aware um, you're going to learn to discern what is your energy and what is somebody else's energy and so you know one of the things that i've realized is you know i have to look like is what i'm experiencing that right now does that match what is happening in my life and so if it doesn't then i work on releasing that and i will talk more about that in another video um, but the main thing that i've experienced is this panicky feeling that doesn't feel like me and um, and and also anxiety that I can't I can't deal with it's like this is overwhelming um, and so I'll talk more about that um, experience in another video because I I was really shocked to understand exactly what was happening um, and so I think that that will be helpful to a lot of people that are just now understanding that they're impasse and then the next big category um, for being sensitive to energy to me are these outside um, sources. And so one of the things that I've learned about recently, um, probably within the last like year or so, 
um, is about the Schumann resonance. And I will put a link in the um, description so that I can send you to, you know, the, the, the site that I follow. Um, but basically, um, the Earth is moving through a very high energy part in the um, photon belt. And I have a video where I talk about this, so I'll also link that video if you want to learn about, more about it. But um, because of this, um, we're being bombarded with energy. And although everybody is experiencing it, empaths, if you're sensitive to energy, then you are going to feel it more. And so um, the amount of energy that we're being hit with is reflected in the Schumann uh, resonance measurements. And so um, normally that vibration that is registered is 7.83 and it's been um, hertz. And so it's been registering up to sometimes 120 hertz. Um, and so it has to do like as we go through and we're getting more and more of this energy, it can make you completely super tired or it can make you have a lot of energy. And I think you know, I check in with a lot of my empath friends to see what they're experiencing and a lot of people who aren't even awake and aware, you know, they don't even question it. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm so exhausted or I was up till two in the morning last night. And so because I know what's going on, I'm always keenly aware of like, let me check and see what's going on with the Schumann. Um, and so that's just one more thing that we have to be aware of is that, you know, we, you know, we may think, that you know it, it's from this but actually you know a lot of people are experiencing fatigue all at the same time and if you go check on the Schumann resonance you'll see that it's like a complete whiteout um, and so I think you know what's happening in just in general terms real quick um, as we incorporate these packets of consciousness their energy they're raising our vibration but it takes time to integrate that and so it can make your body physically tired and it's easier, I think, to absorb the energy. So I think a lot of times it's just easier for our body to absorb this incoming energy um, when we're sleeping. So it's a good idea um, if you are able to take a nap when you are tired to go ahead and do that because that way it'll allow the energies to, um, for your body to incorporate the energies. Okay. And then another thing that I've noticed, um, somebody had mentioned this to me once, they asked, you know, have you, since your Kundalini activation, have you um, become more aware of being sensitive to the full moons? And I thought about it, and I'm like, you know what, I think I have. And so that's another thing that you may want to think about is paying attention to when the full moons and the new moons are, because that can also impact your energy. So for me, um, I've noticed that uh, a few days before the full moon, I will not be able to sleep. Um, and I've heard before that this is because it's actually a portal opening up somehow between the earth and the moon, and I don't really know that much about it. Um, but I have noticed, and so I kind of try to manage and navigate my life a little bit around that, um, because I know that as an empath, a sensitive empath, I'm going to probably you know, be picking up on that energy. And then the last thing I want to talk about is um, locations and places. So this is something that I think I've always been aware of is that, you know, we kind of called it picking up vibes. Um, and so I remember going to certain places and you just, you know, you feel a certain emotion and you don't really understand why. Um, I remember specifically going to Nuevo Laredo once in Mexico um, and I just felt this melancholy energy and I really didn't understand what that was about but it just felt like it was just coming up from the land. Um, I've also been in other places like in Tulum, uh, Mexico. I felt the sacredness there. You could just feel something going on there. You know, I don't even know if I could put words to it. Um, I know also I've been to places like um, this one particular place in Arkansas called Peace Valley. It was extremely peaceful. Um, and so, you know, that's another thing that you know you might pick up on is as an empath that you are also sensitive to um, the energy from certain locations or places and even houses. Um, I remember going to, um, when I was looking for a new house, I walked into this house and I could literally feel the anger in this house. It's like these people had been arguing and that energy was still in that house. 
Um, so it's one of those things where, you know, you probably are aware already that, you know, you feel a certain way when you go to certain places. Um, so anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about today. Stay tuned for the next couple of videos. I will be talking about um, some very specific empath experiences I've had. And I'll also go ahead and share some tools and techniques that I've used to help me through. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.